I belong to a generation born in the 1940s, which around the world was a generation that was rejecting injustice in all its forms, authoritarian rule in all its manifestations. I was mauled and beaten. Gina, you can go back and check the story, December 75, I can't remember exactly. Needed to get 100 stitches at the University Hospital as a result. So this wasn't a time when, you know, challenging the establishment and seeking justice and deeper democracy was something that was uh, without risk. So, well, we felt it had to be done. And in fact, uh, the achievements and the uh, advances that to make are made internationally as well as amongst all our people, uh, I would say justify the efforts and the, the struggles at the time. The people are fearful. I mean, the JLP had a formidable organization. They had a manual, an organizing manual, which require every constituency to have what they call human rights committee. So nice. The human rights committee was really a group of men to defend the JLP. Now that not ideological discussion, but physical defense is how they put it. But essentially if you take a constituency like Porsche Simsimila, and other constituency, those human rights committee were responsible for leading violence. People were fearful, and a lot of people didn't vote in 1980. And the PNP won 50,000 strong, was wrong. The JLP won, they won a massive landslide. We supported the WPJ's position, was one of what we called at the time critical support. That is to say, we uh, supported the People's National Party as what we regarded as better than the Jamaica Labour Party. But we had, when we said critical support, it meant that we reserved the right to criticize the PNP for what we regarded as uh, shortcomings in their mission to achieve justice. So one of the shortcomings which we criticized at the time uh, and where we were uh, very, very critical of the PNP was in the, in the IMF agreement. They went into an agreement with the International Monetary Fund, I think it was in 1977, and uh, we were very critical of that particular agreement. So we, we supported them, asked for people to support their candidates. We didn't have any candidates in the election uh, for that reason. And we felt that they were for justice, but not as full as some as we would wish, and that they made mistakes that we reserve the right to criticize. We criticized the things that we felt was not right, mm -hmm. but we supported the things that we believe were positive for the people. Much of what I've outlined, land for the landless, rights to the workers, involvement of young people into think, movements against the big companies, the backside companies, through the backside levy, freeing up money to do education for people so that we found commonality with policies but we didn't think that they were going all the way to say give the workers the power. One of the slogan in 1980 of the JNP was turn them back. Turn back the free education. Free education which by the way meant that from primary school to university there was no tuition fee to be paid, which is one of the reasons why today Jamaica middle class has expanded with so many black and poor people who a couple of decades ago couldn't make it because once you get to university, the likelihood of your child going to university, and this why we have expanded university registration and from 1% to 13, 15% today because of that move for free education.
But the free education was paid for by the bauxite levy.